It's worth taking a little bit of time to discuss two wire versus conventional wire. And I think the reason I want to do this is there's some things that are going to be dependent upon understanding some concepts of two wire later on. And the way you install two wire and the way you install conventional wire can be very different and it can create problems for you if you haven't installed it correctly or if you try to install it a different way. So first of all, let's take a look at some conventional wire. So here I've got a bundle of conventional wire and this conventional wire, there's 20 wires in this cable and there are 19 colored wires and one white wire. And we call this the common wire, right? So if you, if you aren't familiar with that concept. So the way this works is I'm going to take power and rent it out this blue wire from the controller out through a solenoid and it's going to return via this white wire. That's the complete path. So it's going to out and then loop back. But I can add on an additional wire so I can bring this red wire into the mix so I can run out through this red wire, return through this white. So this white is shared and that's why we call it common. It's common to all of these. So this bundle of 20 wires can support 19 zones, 19 uh, conventional wires for the zones and one common to share to loop back. We're not talking about spares or anything else. This is just the bare bones number of wires it must have. So I got to have at least 20 wires to run 19 zones. Okay, so that's conventional wire. Conventional wire also, the way this is going to do is going to get 24 volts out to the solenoid uh, through this wire path. Now we found that it doesn't always have to be 24 volts, right? You can, sometimes you can use some nine volt batteries to do some testing, or if you have corrosion on there, it's not nearly as critical. Okay. So that's, that's conventional wire. Two wire, all right, we've got something different. Well, first of all, we've got a completely different looking wire. The cable is completely different. So this is a double jacketed wire. So of course we've just got two wires in there, hence the name two wire. And then it's got an outer jacket. And this outer jacket is supposed to be high density polyethylene or HDPE. That's what milk jugs are made of. And this is pretty tough, right? It's hard to bend. It's uh, impervious to water and it's much more durable to damage than conventional wire is. So the cable itself is different. The other thing that's different are the splices. These are DBRY-6 splices. So these are waterproof splices more so than the waterproof splices that you might use on conventional wire. DBRYs versus DBRY-6, mm, there's a difference there. It's about the gel that's in here. DBRY-6 are rated to 600 volts, where DBRYs are only rated to 24 volts. Oh yeah, this runs more than 24 volts. This runs closer to 30 volts, so it would exceed that uh, 24 volt rating. So to meet the UL rating, we've got to use DBRY-6. What we don't want to have happen is we never want to have that gel heat up and drain out. Then our splices are exposed. Okay. So if we've got a wire path that's different. We're missing a component. I need to have a, a bicoder or a decoder in there. What they're going to do is take information from the controller and interpret it. Now if we look, there's a unique serial number on there. And this serial number is Q245141. So when these are connected, what's going to happen is the controller is going to send a signal down looking for serial number 141. Okay, so it, as it's going to go down the entire wire path, the entire wire, wire path is energized and it's going to look for, are you 141? No, keep going. Are you 141? I'm 141. What do you want me to do? Open the zone. Got it. It opens the zone and then it reports back the other direction that it opened the zone. So that's why we call them bicoders or bidirectional. So a couple of things here that are different. We're putting closer to 30 volts on this one and we're sending power and we're sending data on this one, right? We're sending power and data on here. My suggestion to you, treat your two wire path like a data cable. Treat it like the data cable that you have in your house. You've got probably two data cables at home or your office. You've got a cat, cat six computer cable that's carrying network data to either your computer or your router. Okay. That's a data cable. Um, you also might have a coax cable bringing cable TV into your house. That's also a data cable. Both of those have conductors in them that carry power and data. If you treat this like a data cable first, you're going to be much happier. Now I would dare anyone, but please don't take this dare, but I would I would, I would imagine it would be a horrible idea to take this stair to go out and find that data cable in your house 
chop it in half with the shovel. It's really jagged. And then twist those wires together and wrap it in duct tape and put it in the wet ground. Like, Damn, what? Nobody's going to do that. That's idiotic. What person would? Yeah, the people that do this, right? We see that on conventional wire. We see people with bad splices on conventional wire and they get away with it. You can't get away with it on two wire. Treat this like a data cable first, a power cable second. You're going to you're going to be much happier if you do that. Mm -hmm.